11. Hebrews chapter number 11, if you will. Good to see each one of you this evening. And uh, thank the Lord. It's been a beautiful day, have it not? Um, though every day is beautiful. Uh, how many of you like today? Amen. A few. Uh, I learned something, and that is no matter how bad we feel, no matter maybe how bad we are, there's always someone who will work. That's right. And there's always someone to be glad to trade you places. No matter what your situation is, there's someone that'll be glad to trade. And we ought to thank God for uh, what he has given us. Amen. Uh, need to stop sometimes and thank the Lord for what he didn't give you. Uh, if he would gave us many times what we asked for, we wouldn't be here tonight. Uh, the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11, I just want to take a verse and look a little bit different direction at it tonight. The book of Hebrews, chapter number 11. Uh, we're only going to look at one verse. And, uh, and it's verse number one. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This evening I want to just <coughs> talk to you for a little while and preach on the promises of God. I may have preached on it not too long ago. Uh, I know it hadn't been too awful long ago. And if I do preach on a message uh, two or three times in a row, uh, just uh, allow me that part. Uh, I noticed Michael a while ago was having a hard time remembering. And uh, his reason is his age. Uh, he's so old. Now, I don't have those problems there. Uh, that's not, you know, that's not mine. What mine is, I plant don't know. But uh, uh, in the verse we have here, uh, I'm going to preach on the promises of God out of verse number one. And just look there again. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. You go through the book uh, of the chapter here, chapter 11 of Hebrews, and you find some mighty things Amen. that were accomplished. Now it speaks of Noah, and it speaks of Moses, and Abraham, on and on and on, many of them. Then it speaks of people that's not named. Uh, but uh, the things they was able to accomplish because of their faith. There's a lot that we can do if we have the faith to step out. But when you look at uh, this chapter and you see uh, what these have done, uh, really it's God that done it for them. We all know that. But uh, uh, it's all based in their hope, the hope uh, of faith here is the substance of things hoped for. Now, we can have faith in what God said because of the promises God has made. Now, God has stood uh, firm. God has stood solid 
on his promises. So we, we can uh, trust God. We can have faith in the things that we haven't seen uh, without evidence even. Uh, but God's promises uh, tonight to uh, think about the song standing on the promises of God. There are, 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 are so many and as Christians, that is our standing ground. That is the place that we are to stand and we must stand is the promises of God. Now, the promises of God is not only to have complete assurance in God fulfilling them, but to live life in a faithful service to him who made those promises. Uh, if you look through the Bible, and there are many, 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 many promises. I've seen different ones who have supposedly counting. Uh, I have never tried counting the promises in God because I'll run out of fingers and toes real fast. And uh, so I, I can't I can't get that. But it has been said, some have said that there's some 10,000 promises in the Bible. I've heard some say there are even up as much as 20,000 promises in the Word of God uh, uh, that God has made. And Many, many of those promises are made to God's people. Now, there's some conditional promises and there's some unconditional promises. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is a promise. That is an unconditional promise. Red, yellow, black or white, good, bad, mean, man, woman, uh, uh, he, he just flat said anybody, whosoever, and he will save whosoever shall call upon his name. So that is an unconditional promise. There are many uh, promises of God that uh, are conditional. If we will do what God tells us to do, then he will take care of it. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then God will add these things unto us. He will meet the needs. Now, uh, just though I want you to start with, uh, I want you to notice some promises that God has made to you. To the child of God, God has made you promises. Now, uh, sometimes you and I may not keep our promises uh, and we ought to be awfully careful if we make promises we ought to keep those we ought to be careful about making promises that we cannot keep uh, but then uh, but we, we, we need to when I stood in an altar many years ago uh, I promised that young girl uh, a lot of things and uh, I haven't always fulfilled everything I promised her uh, many times many many times I have failed her uh, but I can say to you tonight her God her husband may have failed her but her God has never failed her one time the promises he makes to us. Now, one, God has promised to strengthen you. Amen. To strengthen you and I. We may be weak, but thou art strong. Uh, we can count on that. Uh, God promises 
to give you rest. Now, uh, two or three, I'm asked how you are tonight, and as I uh, said, I am too. Sometimes we write down tarp. In fact, I have found out that I get tarred easier than I do anything else. I mean, I don't have to do anything to get tarred anymore. Uh, do you remember the old standard ship uh, gear is all you had to do all the work? You'd almost get tarred uh, in shifting gears, especially when you had to get down in bulldogs, blowing up those uh, hills and all. But uh, anymore, it's automatic. I mean, man, you just get tar and go. You don't even get tired uh, of shifting anymore. And that's the way I am uh, about getting tired. It's just automatic. Uh, but God has promised to give you rest. Coming to me, he said, and I will give you rest. Amen. Folks, that's a promise from God. We find that God promises to take care of of all your needs. Are you his? Amen. Are you his? Amen. Then God said he's going to take care of you. That's right. Now, again, uh, some of the promises God makes is provision. If we will do what he said. Now, you know, if we don't go out and plant a garden, if we don't go out and hoe them, work them, weed them, and uh, bring them in, can them, and, uh, so forth. Don't expect to have uh, a jar of green beans that's been canned. Don't expect someone else to do it. The Bible says, you know, if we won't work, we don't deserve to eat. So, I mean, the promises are provisional. So, but he has promised to take care of all your needs. Amen. I've only been saved since 1965. But I can honestly stand here tonight and tell you there's never been a need in my life that God has not met. Amen. Now, I, I, I'd say there's a few things that I might have wanted, but I found out later that I didn't need them and they would probably hurt me if he let me have them. But he promised to meet your need. Child of God, uh, he loves you. I was kidding Mike a while ago. Uh, you folks have been uh, good to him and uh, 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 whatever his wife's name is. Uh, been, been good to her and, and for the baby, the showers and all. And uh, I said, Mike, I've got one question for you. I said, you've had those showers. People have been good to you. And you've got things all over your house, right? He said, yeah. I said, did you ever stop and think have you got room for the baby? <laughs> you know, we get so many things that we miss out and we forget the main thing. God said, I'll give you the main thing. He will meet Amen. our needs. And uh, God has promised to answer our prayers. We've heard tonight how God has answered prayer. Uh, the other morning, uh, Sandra was talking about and Bruce, how God gave healing to uh, their son Patrick. Uh, we heard how um, Shelby's son David. Uh, I could stand here tonight and tell you many, many things, many, many times, many, many people that God has answered their prayers. Yeah. But then we come back and say, well, God didn't answer my prayers. You ever been there? We all have. Lord, why didn't you answer mine? Well, you see, the Lord don't answer our prayer so we can stand back and say, look, I've got a real close friendship with God. He'll do what I asked him to do. God doesn't answer our prayers that we can boast about. You see, the prayers that God answers are the ones that can bring glory to his name. Amen. I mean, whether it's Shelby's son or uh, Bruce and Sandra's son. Uh, nobody can take uh, uh, credit for that except God. Uh, Brother Tim, uh, our son-in-law, Joy, uh, her uh, their mother, Tim's mother, uh, has the cancer. They, uh, what we heard yesterday, 
doctors want to try a different type of medicine and different things, and uh, said it may help and give more time. Uh, I thank God for the medicine. I, I thank God for the prayer of Austin Waldo that God has given. Uh, you know, the, the knowledge and the wisdom that people can do what they can do, that our doctors can do all they can do. I thank God for the helicopters that can get people uh, to uh, the hospitals. Uh, I mean, uh, unbelievable times. I had a call one evening. I uh, went to the hospital in Columbus, and one of our kids in the church had been in a, had, had a bicycle uh, wreck and uh, all kinds of problems. And they air flighted him to, uh, I believe it's Children's Hospital, if I remember right. Uh, there's that memory I was talking to you about. Uh, in fact, I know it was. And uh, so I got there as fast as I could and with the family. And in just a little bit, things were calmed down. And I started to leave. And someone met me at the door and said, Preacher, don't leave. I said, well, uh, you know, I, I, I think I can. I'm, everything's okay. And they said, the preacher got the helicopter is coming back. I said, what? They said that helicopter's back on the way back in, bringing in another person. And when I got to it, it was Josh and Jana's little boy, Josiah, that had uh, an accident. I can't remember. Uh, I stopped breathing. Uh, uh, so I thank God for helicopters. I mean, I thank God for them. And by the way, pray for them. Uh, you remember, what's it been, two years ago? I was get my message on my book, that's right. Uh, a couple of years ago, where the one helicopter took off and they was trying to go rescue, and uh, I don't know all the circumstances, but uh, the plane crashed. And I think it was five, six, or seven people that was on, I mean, the, the rescue squad, all, all of the hot, the uh, uh, pilot, and all were uh, killed in that accident. Uh, but our God can do many things. He's given, given us uh, uh, these things. If, if that would have been in the day I was just talking about, if that had been in the day of the horse and buggies, I mean, man, they, they'd never got that far. Uh, so many things. And, and God has given us uh, the knowledge who, who would ever think that they can take a knife, a knife, I guess, and slit your wrist, and then put a tube up your arm and go all the way into your heart and uh, work on it? And they got pictures. I mean, they're just camera, you know, and they're, we're looking there, seeing everything in your heart. By the way, you need to keep your heart clean, too. I mean, they can see that. Uh, but I mean, it is miraculous what they can do. In my heart, they they, they, they told us that we had an empty spot in there, and I, I probably got a lot of empty spots in my heart. But uh, they took a, a, a new thing, and what's it called? I don't even know. A watchman that is in my heart. Now, it's not in the, the veins, not on the outside, but they went into the heart. They went up through my groin and uh, up, and uh, they went into the heart and, and put that watchman in there. Uh, so they know I've got a heart, they finally found it. But I mean, miraculous, the things that can be done. And uh, God uh, can answer our prayers. Folks, Amen. humanly, there is not, I better take that humanly out. Yeah. There is nothing that our God cannot do outside of the will of God. He promised that he'd answer your prayers. Now, a lot of times when God doesn't answer the way we see fit, uh, we almost get mad at God. Oh, I've, in the last 50-some years, 
You'd be surprised the number of people that I've seen that are mad at God. Why didn't God do for me what he did for Joshua? Why didn't he bring down the walls around my territory? I mean, why didn't he bring down my Goliath? I don't know. I don't have the answer. But I'll tell you what. If you're God's child, he's going to take care of you. Amen. He's going to do it in his way. He's going to do it in the way that is best for him. Because he promised that answer our prayers. Now, sometimes we don't know how to pray. I was in the hospital the other night, a uh, critical situation. I uh, went in, and as I was going to uh, get ready to go into the emergency room, one of the daughters met me and said, Preacher, pray that God would heal my dad. He's so bad. And so we stopped right there, had a word of prayer in the hall, and I asked God to so take that precious young woman and heal her father. And uh, in your name, Lord, went inside the room there a little bit farther. And that, uh, that daddy, another of his daughters met him said, preacher, dad is bad. They aren't giving him any hope at all. I said, preacher, I want you to just pray and ask God to take him on home. And I started to pray. And I prayed. But I prayed a different way. Lord, not I will, but you will be done now. From that day on, my prayers have been different. I mean, you can ask me to pray for you. I'll, I'll pray for you. But I'm not going to pray for what you want. I don't even pray for what I want. You know, Lord, thy will be done. Amen. Because of this God's will, it's going to be so much better than if we have our own. I don't understand why Michael, a young man, passed away. I don't understand. I don't understand why little babies. I don't understand. You know, God never told me about understanding. But He said He prayed. He said He would answer our prayers. I can stand here and tell you, I don't understand why, how, when, where, who. I don't understand any of that. But I have seen God answer enough prayers to know that our God is real. That's right. And he will take care of you. Right. He will take care of you. You see, sometimes, not sometimes, all the time, God knows better than we know. And he said he would answer our prayers. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't pray. Now, sometimes I really think I don't pray. I mean, you know, the devil's real. Uh, sometimes the devil will. Uh, probably not you all, but the devil works on me sometimes and says, well, you know, none of that's real. Mm -hmm. You are ever having the devil talk to you about it? Not in an audible voice, but the devil knows how to get to you. And sometimes you just want to throw up your hands and quit. But then you get a telephone call where David was ill, uh, where uh, Patrick was ill, and where just a while ago, Joanne, a few days ago, looked bad. But now, about a week and a half from now, they're saying, Lord, why don't you be out? Uh, you've had, our Lord has promised to answer our prayers. Amen. You know why you don't answer some prayers? Because we don't pray. But then do you realize the Lord answers some prayers that you never speak out of? The Lord sees your heart before those words ever come out of your mouth. The Lord knows what that means. To hear a sheriff a while ago, the good report. Thank God. Thank God. 
Listen, he's promised to answer our prayers. Some other promises, we find that God has promised that though we don't understand things, he will work things for the good of his children. I heard a friend of mine was driving down the road in Cincinnati, Ohio, many years ago, had a terrible wreck. They rushed him to the hospital. They took him to the emergency room, and uh, they come into his room and said, Bruce, you wasn't really hurt too bad. They said, Bruce, you had a bad heart. You've got to have a open heart surgery now. Now. So you know, if it hadn't been for that accident, he never knew that he needed that surgery. God sometimes will take what we think to be bad and use it for our good. But he didn't promise how he was going to do it. He just said he'd take care of us. Amen. He'd take care of us. We find that uh, God promises to be with you. Uh, to be with us. Uh, y'all y'all not like I am. Y'all y'all never get scared of anything, do you? Uh, uh, I, I, I kind of get scared of everything. And uh, that's why I'm married my wife, so she be there to protect me uh, through everything. If I told you to go to the motel, I get on the far side of the door part of the bed and let my wife sit closest to the door. So if anybody in the bed, she can take care of it. I mean, uh, uh, but sometimes you get scared. You know what? Our Lord said he'd always be with us. Amen. He'd always be with us. So I'd be glad of that. Me too. I, I, I've seen so many times if he wasn't there, I don't know if we could get more. That's right. Uh, but if we know he's there, it's okay. Yeah, we can have two weeks ago, Dodie and I was talking after church one night. That's when her mom was so sick. And her mom had told her, uh, either way is okay with me. If the Lord leaves me, then good. If the Lord takes me, then that's good. Uh, and the Lord saw fit. And then probably within a week to 10 days of that, the Lord seen fit to take her mama home. But you know what? Whether here, there, or in the air, he said, I'll be with you. Hey. The presence of the Lord. We find that he's promised to uh, uh, freedom uh, for us. Freedom. Uh, freedom from sin. Now, uh, as a, a child of God, when we are born again, my friend, uh, we have been free uh, from sin. I'll put it this way. Uh, not free from being in the midst of sin. Not free from ever sinning. But if we sin, it's not because we have to. It's because we choose to. Y'all with me now? A lot of times, a lot of times, we blame things on the devil. It's not his fault. A number of years ago, one comedian, Jerry Watts, used to always talk about the devil made me do it. My friend, we blame a lot of things on him. That's not true. You're here today, and uh, if you smoked a cigarette, and I didn't see you, you did. Uh, don't think someone told on you. Or anything else. But if you smoked a cigarette today, it wasn't because you had to. It's because you chose to. I got up many years ago to preach the sermon, and I was preaching on some different things, but giving and so forth. And uh, uh, in doing so, I, I, I said that, uh, you know, God sees everything we're doing. Uh, some of you may have bought a boat today. And uh, I said, you may have paid $2,000 for that boat. And uh, so on, I just, you know, carry on and so forth. And uh, I noticed one guy, man, he was looking bad and uh, so forth. He come up to me after service and said, preacher, who told you? 
<laughs> I said, who told me what? He said, preacher, I'm bought a boat today. <laughs> he said, preacher, I paid $2,000. You know, the God that we love and the God that loves us and the God's love, he's keeping pretty good track on us. I mean, he, he sees everything that we do. Now, if we sin, we do it because we want to. We needed $5,000 one time, but this is many, many, many years ago, in order to, uh, we, we was trying to buy a car. This was when I was in New Carlisle. And uh, the next day, we needed $5,000 to uh, meet that uh, requirement on the property. And uh, kid them, I said, I don't care how you get it. I said, go rob a bank or something. But, uh, just make sure you put the money in. Across from where we were meeting, across the street was a bank. That night, that bank was robbed. It had $5,000 that was taken from it. And so Wednesday night, uh, I said, no, I didn't tell any of you to rob that bank. But if you're the one that robbed it, you should have put it in the offering at least. Uh, but God didn't need that. God supplied that money in his own. You see, God don't want us robbing the bank. He don't want us robbing anyone else. Uh, God wants us to be honest. But God, if, if that was God's will, he would meet that need. When we took care of it the next morning, God would take care of that. Why? Because he is able. Now we can't do things wrong and blame God. You know, we get mad and uh, ball someone out or uh, cuss someone out. I so hope you're not doing those things. Uh, I mean, he hadn't told me anything today, but uh, I, I hope you have it. But you know what? When we do sin, it's not because we have to. It's because we choose to. We've got freedom from sin. Yeah. He promises that nothing can separate us from him. Now, when we got saved to those who believe on his name and so forth, he gave the power to become the sons of God. We're his children. We're his children. In the year 1960, 1940, I'm maybe not as old as I think I am, but in the year 1943, I was born into the family of Dennis Henry Maple. Now, there's probably a lot of times my dad didn't want to call me. I mean, there, there's probably a lot of times he wished that the Lord had given him a good son. Uh, and all and all. But you know, there was never a time that I could do anything, any place, any reason. There is nothing that I could ever do where I would no longer be his son. That's right. The day you got saved, you become the child of God. Amen. You know what? You're his forever more. That's right. I tell you what, I remember one time that I heard some men talking and uh, they said words I'd never heard before. And uh, I went home and, and I was proud. I mean, I, I learned some new words. And I mentioned one of those words. And my daddy didn't like it very well. My daddy, if, if he was living today, uh, I mean, the welfare department would have hung him a long time ago. But he got out a horse whip. I mean, a real horse whip. And he didn't have horses. But I'll tell you what, I knew what horses felt like. But you know what? To this day, I've never said that word again. I hear up, I and mean, it's, it, it's, not, it's not a curse word. It's not something that, um, today, it, 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 it's a pretty good word, from what they say today. But I'll tell you what, my daddy taught me a lesson. Why? Because he loved me. Now, I never said that word again. Why? Because I chose not to. 
I knew the consequences of it. So I forgot, we don't have to sin. We yeah. don't have to. Well, they did that. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Don't give too much away. Most of us don't have much. I mean, we, we shouldn't give it away. Uh, let's hold. Let's hold our peace. Let's hold our mind. And then I find where God promises as you're his, he promises you everlasting life. Amen. You know what, folks? You're his. You're his. You will be with him throughout his way. Amen. Forevermore. Those that believe on his name gives he he gives <coughs> everlasting life. When everything else on this earth is going back to nothing, when the most extreme things you can think of would be gone, <coughs> shall be burned, my friend, you and I are going to live on. I saw a picture the other day. Should have. I think it was one of the redwoods in California, and it was talking about, you know, the size of them and so forth. And I had a picture of one of those uh, big trees, and beside of it stood a wall. Here's this wall down here. There's this tree up here. I saw another picture where they had a car driving through those trees. And you know what? God can do some mighty big things. But the biggest thing he told me and promised me is I have everlasting life. Amen. You know, if you're a child of God, you're going to have to put up with me forever. Amen. Don't feel bad. I'm going to have to put up with some of you. <laughs> but forever! The song says when we've been there, Ten thousand years of saying forevermore. We have no less day to sing than when we first began. I'm the youngest of seven children. All are home now, except one of my brothers. And uh, sometimes you miss them. Lance family, big family. There's none left but her. And uh, Sometimes you get to miss them. Sometimes I like to ask them questions. I was the youngest, so they knew all the answers. I didn't know any. Uh, but now I have nieces and nephews call me for the, uh, to try to get the answers of everyone. But I, I, I don't know. But the thing is, we miss, like I said last week, my mother uh, on the 2nd of June died in 1961. So many times I thought, boy, I'd like to ask him or ask her up close. So many things. And you have the same thing. But my friend, today we're upon it. But think about it. Christians will never be upon it. We'll be in the presence of the Lord. That's right. Forever. The promises of God. Well, I've never got around to the message, but I guess I better tell you. Heads are bowed, nine are closed, and we stand. Thank God. Thank God for the promises that He has given us. Thank God that He'll take care of every need. Thank God, not for things, but thank God for Him. If there's a need in your life, if you're unsaved, you have a great need that's salvation. Amen. Would you come to Him in love? Christian, would you put it all over the altar? Things in your life maybe not bring glory to his name. Isn't it time to bring them to an altar and leave them there at the feet of his cross?